when you're lost in the darkness, look for the pod. Specifically, the Prestige TV podcast on the Ringer Podcast Network, where we're breaking down every new episode of HBO's The Last of Us. On Sunday nights, grab your battery and join Van Lathan and Charles Holmes for an instant reaction to the latest episode. Then head back to the QZ on Tuesdays for a deep dive with Joanna Robinson and Mallory Rubin. From character arcs to video game adaptation choices, story themes to needle drops, we'll parse every inch of this cordyceps-coated universe. Watch out for mouth tendrils and follow along on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other, well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says authenticity guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay authenticity guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Littman. I am delighted to say that today I am joined by Sierra Jackson. She's one of mine and Callie's favorites. You probably know her from her flawless skincare routine, which she tells us about. And honestly, so much more. It was a really great conversation. And let's just get straight into it. Welcome to Bachelor Party, Sierra Jackson. Sierra, I've been dying to chat with you for a long time. How are you? I am doing wonderful. Thank you. You made a very brief appearance a few months ago when Susie was on the pod. She was recording from your apartment and you were like in the background taking like taking care of business. And I think you like brought her coffee. <laughs> I did. I did. I have like a Breville like this fancy Breville espresso machine. And so I was making her lattes when she was staying with me. <laughs> like different lattes, like lavender and vanilla and stuff like that. And Susie was like, oh my gosh, thank you. These are so good. You're like the best host ever. I mean, if I'm ever in Dallas, I'm going to ask if you can make me a latte. <laughs> Girl, I got you. Come through and I got you. <laughs> are you from Dallas or do you just live there now? I just live here now. I'm from Oklahoma City, but oh. I will be leaving Dallas soon to go oh. to the Bay Area. Oh, nice. How come? My company that I work for is out there. I don't know if you heard of like OpenAI. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I work I work there. And so got to go into like office some days of the week. And so got to move wow. out to San Francisco. <laughs> Damn. Where are you going to live in the Bay Area? I lived in San Francisco for three years. Oh my gosh, then you can help me. So this is, I'm thinking <laughs> Fillmore Street. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's cool. Like Pack Heights. Kind of. You but know like lower, lower Pack the, Heights, right? Like close to the actual Fillmore? Yes. Like like where the, the Korean market is. There's a mm, state yeah. and a Korean cool. market. I want to be in that area because it's a little grunge still. Yes, it's it is. it's not too clean. Like close to Geary, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's what cool. I'm thinking so cool. we'll see, but I just, I like the vibe. I like that it's not too, like, uppity. I lived, like, right on the other side of Geary. I lived in the Western Edition, which is not too far from there, which I, which was, it was kind of, like, it was, it was not nice at the time. I haven't been back to San Francisco in many years, so I don't even know. But at the time, I loved it. I was very close to Golden Gate Park, too, which was really cool. Ooh. Is your boyfriend moving with you? Yes. Phew. Yes. You so, guys are really cute on yeah. Instagram. I was going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, yes, the plans for him too as well. But his business and everything is here in Dallas, so it might take him a little bit longer to get out there. But he will be like relocating with me and everything like that. But nice. he has to like get somebody to like take over like he, what he does for his company first. And so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's been almost a year since you were in paradise, and I'm so fascinated that you're moving for a job. 
not because that's so revolutionary, but in Bachelor Nation, it is kind of like not that common that people like just like go back to work. So what what's like the last year been like for you? And it feels like you in, in some ways are an anomaly, which no shade at anyone, but it's just sort of funny, you know? <laughs> Girl, I'm that beach, okay? Because <laughs> I did, I, I, I left Paradise, right? I, had, I was at a previous tech company. It was given the uh, an ultimatum, essentially, and it was paradise or that job. And so on top of like some bullying and stuff and some other things from them, but whatever. But <laughs> I left and I was like, I don't want to be here. Not a good work environment. So I'm leaving and decided to go to paradise. Went to paradise, left early and realized, you idiot, you was all up in your fields and you don't have a job <laughs> and now you don't get no more money. And so like, and so I was just like, what the heck did you do, Sierra? And so there was one point where I, I like hit up the producers. I was like, can I come back? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, can I come back? I'll just hang out on the beach. Like, I'll, you guys need some drama. Like, I'll give you some drama. Like, I just need some money, you know? <laughs> and so they were like, no, Sierra, you can't come back. I was like, oh. So I spent so much time looking for a job. And I had a friend. She's actually on my Instagram. You can find her. She was like the pregnant lady, but she's not pregnant anymore because she had a baby. But we worked at a previous tech company back in COVID times and she had left to go to, you know, open AI. Well, I was, she knows all about my journey and she knows all about, you know, the show and everything. And she goes, you know, we have a position that opened up, apply for it, you know? So she knew I was job searching. I wasn't finding anything. Girl, I started going into debt. Like I started, you know, like money started going dry, you know what I'm saying? Like savings and stuff. Cause I think I was all yeah. without a job for, Oh, uh, five months, almost six, five, wow. yeah, five months. Yeah. So on top of having a car payment, insurance, rent, you know, all of these of course, other things, yeah. right? So yeah, being an adult. Yeah. It's expensive. Exactly. Exactly. And so I finally though, ended up getting like some temp jobs in tech, some contract temporary jobs in August. I finally got hired for a temp job or like late July. And then I ended up getting the job at OpenAI. I was contract at first, and then I transitioned to full time. Congratulations! Earlier this year, thank you so much. And it was it was really cool because when I first went onto the the company, I had no idea like what they were doing or all the exciting fun things that they were like working on, and to get to like be a part of like I'm on the recruiting team, so cool. getting to be a part of like the hiring process and like the interview process yeah. and the candidate experience. And then knowing that some of the people who have worked on like chat are people that I've like, like hired or I've been a part of the hiring process for is really, really cool to like get to talk to like such smart, phenomenal, like people, you know, they're just so, so, so smart. I'm just like, I feel like that's the awesome. person in the room all the time. <laughs> It's also really cool to be like at the forefront of technology. It's not even just like you're working in tech, but like the future that people are wondering, like, how will this change our lives and how will this change how we work? I mean, there's so many, so many implications. That's really cool. Was it hard to like both on like a practical level? Was it hard to like apply for jobs and people could like Google you and be like, Sierra Jackson, bachelor. And then also like emotionally, was it hard to like come back from the, from paradise and be like, okay, I'm just going back to work. Like, what was that like? Gosh, so yeah, coming back from paradise was an emotional like roller coaster, and um, there there was a lot of reasons why. One of them was reading the leakings that were coming mm -hmm. out, like reading the leaks, and being like, "I'm gonna fuck this man up." Like you know, I was just like, <laughs> uh, part of me was just like, "I was set up," you know. So you were, you were Sierra. Yeah, I was totally, and I was so upset with myself because I believed him. And so then that's kind of where I was like, okay, okay. You know, I, was, I had to process it, you know? But that was really emotionally hard. And then there was a the financial stress of it. And then, you know, knowing the show is going to air, not knowing how it's going to air or what is going to air. So there was like that, you know, and then because of the things that were leaking, you know, you're getting comments from these women 
these old bitter women just like you're not fit to be a mother you oh will never be a good a good mother to James he needs someone you know that's better fitting and all these things these just awful things that these grown ass women are saying to me and a lot of them have like you know god mother of 3 you know ridiculous yeah bios. so hypocritical Exactly. And so that was what was really hard because I'm like, you don't even know me. So you can't say if somebody's going to be a good mom or not. And so, of course. and like, you know, that was really hard. But then going like going back to work itself, I was wanting to go back to work though. I was ready to go back to work because I could never be just like a stay at home mom or anything. Like my, like that's just not in me. I will mm-hmm. work. I will start a business. I will do something because I have to. And so I got stir crazy not having a job where I was, I was at the point where I was like, I will do anything. I will go down the street and work at this diner just to talk to people. Like I was like, I I need to do something, you know? And so it was, it was quite the journey, but transitioning back into it all, like work was what got me, like got my head right again. Yeah. And like working and starting to that's make awesome. money is like, what's that? That's what got me comfortable. Yeah. I think it's really cool that like you turn to work. I just a person like relate to that. Like when I'm really stressed out, I like, I like wake up and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna do some work. I'm just focus on something else. Like check things off my list and like, just do something else. I mean, I, I don't think I can relate to like what it's like to have people comment on you uh, for when they don't know you, but like just in terms of like using your job as like something to like help, you know, kind of get through a tough time. I do totally relate to that. And that, that really resonates. It's, and I think that's like, a really practical strategy. So that's really cool. And I'm, I'm glad to hear it turned into this awesome opportunity. It's really cool. Yeah. It, 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 it was a wonderful, wonderful feeling just because like, you know, you get like dumped by this guy and then you find this new man who's like wonderful, right? You get like basically dumped by your previous job around the same time. And you find an even better, you know, it's just like, it's kind of like this feeling of like, I feel like you were in a rom-com. Yeah. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like it was just like this tech company didn't want me, but then the the one, this one did. And this one wants like, like very much so values me and, you know, enjoys me having me on their team. And then there's you. And then like this man didn't value me. And then there's Keaton. And, you know, and so it's just like coming, kind of coming around to like the first half of last year being a lot of rejection and the second half of the year being a lot of wins and you know kind of like like you mentioned you know like the people googling me easily and things like that that was probably why I couldn't get a job it was it was so fresh it was so out there not a lot of companies do want the eyes on them and so it does it does make it very challenging to go through the interview process and to get a job also, whenever people recognize you yeah. as you're going to do an interview. Yeah, but as a, as a recruiter, you're like, you're like on the front lines of a company, like representing what the company is about and like vetting people to join. Yeah, that, that, that must be hard. Also, it's hard. So I, I really admire that you're <laughs> able to make it work. <laughs> I, and I love it. I've been in the recruiting world for the past, you know, a few years and specifically with tech. And I, I really do enjoy it. Um, it's just really such a fun experience, but I think it's because I'm actually passionate about like, like hosting kind of like Susie and bringing her a coffee. Right. And she's staying at my place. (laughs) It's just everything about me is like, I want to take care of people and I want to make sure that they're taken care of and they feel comfortable, welcome and safe, you know, all of these things. And so I think that's just a part of my character in general And so it allows me to work somewhere where my character is the position itself, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. And hearing that makes what happened to you in paradise even worse. It's like no one was looking out for you. Oh my God. So we we haven't even mentioned him, but we're talking about Michael A, who you were coupled up with before you, he ended things with you. And did you watch the show? Like, or were you just like, no, I don't yeah. want to see it. it was, just curious, like I, if, I if you were watched. interested. Wow. I watched because I wanted to see what my edit was. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think? I thought that there was a lot of things that they left out. And I think that had they, they, they you know, there's they're filming everybody's story, so it's hard. But had they been able to show more of like me and Michael, they would know there's some stuff that... 
They didn't put on cameras. We were in a hot tub for like four hours. That's very. I went on camera. That's a really like, long time you know? in a hot tub. Were you okay? That's like not safe. <laughs> <laughs> we were okay. Yes, we were okay. But like, you know, like there was just things like that. Like he was getting all happy, happy mm-hmm. when we were in the pool. Like things like that where I'm like, I hope your girl that she had coming on that y'all had previously been dating knows about all this. Oh, I hope seriously? she knows how much you want chocolate. Cause <laughs> have you talked to her? <laughs> no, I have not talked to her. I have not talked to her. Have you talked to him? I don't have any like reason to. No, other than like the last time I talked to him was the Paradise Reunion because he freaked out and texted me at like 6 a.m. after the reunion and was like, and I'm putting him on blast. I do not give a fuck. But... <laughs> He texted me at like 6 a.m. the room. He was like, why are you threatening me? I'm like, I'm not threatening you. How am I threatening you? Like, why, why, why are you texting me at 6 a.m.? Like, I, I just, like, that was my response. I was with Kate. I was at Kate's house with Eliza and her. Nice. And we were all three hanging out. And yeah, like, Kate was like, what the heck? He just woke up. And like, this is how he wanted to start his day. I was like, apparently, you know? And what so, was he even referring to? Like, had you guys been in touch? Like, what what did he mean? Why are you threatening me? Because I wrote on Twitter that like, I had receipts and stuff like uh, that, which I did. I did have receipts of like communication. And so I did. And so he's like, you're threatening me. Why are you threatening me? I'm like, I'm not threatening you. I'm stating a fact. It's, I do have receipts. It would be a threat if I said that I was going to like, If you don't do this, I'm going to do this. Like, or whatever, you know? Like, that's a threat. I'm not threatening you. And he then he's like, I've been through so much. You have no idea how much I've been through and how stressful this has been. I'm like... Okay, sure, buddy. I mean... Yeah, I'm just, like, I'm sure it has been stressful. It's been stressful for the whole cast. So... Yeah. Why are you any different? Why are you special? So there was that. And then, you know, um, we got producers involved. You know, and I was basically just like, tell this man to stop texting me. Mm. Tell him to stop hitting me up. Tell him to leave me alone. Like, he chose his, his he picked his pick, and they're, they're good. And, you know, like, I don't know why everything I say and everything I do gets under his skin. I Like, there's <laughs> things that I tweet that are, have nothing to do with him. Right. So, like, but yet he's over here paranoid that it all has something to do with him, and it doesn't. And so I was just like, tell him to stop texting me. Tell him to leave me alone. Like... And so then, yeah, they did. But he tried to tell on me first to producers, and so then the producers called me. Like I'm the bad guy. What did he? They're like that's what you? that's really lame. <laughs> so I, 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 that's that's interesting to me. So like, did you feel like you could trust the producers? Like, were you mad after what you went through, or did you feel like you had like an ally that you could trust? No, I trust these producers just because at the end of the day, they're producers. Yeah, it's their job. And I'm very well aware of, like, their job. And if you ever go into, like, the TV world and you get mad at producers for producing... Right. (laughs) Then it's, like, I mean, like, it's literally their job. It's in the title. And so the thing is that they can only produce what you give them. Right. So if you act like a bitch, they (laughs) they, they have stuff to make you look like a bitch. Right. If you're really nice then you're really nice. You know what I mean? Like they can only produce what you give them, you know? And yes, you could be pissed off and be acting like a bitch and it could be about coffee, but you still (laughs) act like a bitch. So they can use the fact that you were bitching about coffee and use it for something completely else. Yes, they can do that. But it doesn't negate the fact that you were still being bitchy. You know, so... You did not give them anything. And I'm. it's probably one of the reasons why... There was concern. I mean, I, I don't, I've never spoken to Michael, so I don't, I don't, and all I have is what I've seen on TV. So I don't like know him, but I'm just saying like, you were very composed and you clearly like the way that it read to me or the way that I, I interpreted it when I watched it was like, you were like, I'm leaving rather than having like giving anyone material to use on TV. And that was obviously very wise. Although I feel like you got you all can't see it, but Sierra's nodding right now vig- vigorously. <laughs> but I I feel like we barely got to know you. Like I, I wish we had gotten to know you much more. Like it's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the pod because Callie and I have been such fans, and I will be asking you about your skincare and makeup routine because it always looks flawless. But <laughs> I, you know, I just feel like we the show obviously prioritized making him look like, you know, a really sympathetic person. And I'm not saying he's not, but it's just like 
because I don't know, but I'm just saying like what the show gave us was like this, the sympathetic guy who's had, who's had grief, who's going to like find a beautiful relationship. And like, that was just like, it was just really obvious, not even good television. And it would have been like way more interesting to actually like see people talk about what's going on. That's what's so annoying actually about these like pre-planned relationships. Like at this point, the viewers aren't idiots. So like you can tell when it's like too good to be true exactly. or like fake or whatever. I think that the meanest, nastiest thing you can do is play with somebody's emotions. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of things you can do. You can be blunt or, or confrontational or you can be bitchy and all these things are mean, right? But playing with somebody's emotions is probably the like the cruelest thing that you can do just because like that person is trusting you. That person is, they're being vulnerable, their walls are down and then you're choosing to take advantage or manipulate the situation for gain. And that is not okay. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like I have really gotten to know Michael through that experience. And and even after the experience, I've gotten to know him, him as a person. And I think that a lot, a lot of, a lot of America and a lot of the world and the viewers don't know him. Mm -hmm. They think they know him. Mm -hmm. They know his Instagram him. But who he really is, I don't think they know. And he's not a bad man. He's not. But he is not this goody two-shoe either (laughs) that people think he is. He is not. He is a normal man like all the rest of them. And he (laughs) he likes rap music. He likes brown girls. He likes sneakers. He's like, he is not just some Ohio white boy that's wholesome and da, 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 da. He hung out with Justin, Andrew, Rod. He hung out with all the black boys on that mm-hmm. beach all the time. He is, he, I, I would tell him when we were on Paradise, I said, you are a black man in a white man's body. That's like, I would tell him <laughs> that all the time. I would just like, I would say that. I was like, you are a brother. You literally are. And it, like he would laugh and like the other guys would be like, yeah, like, yeah, he is like, he is, he is basically a black man in a white man's body. If I could describe it, like that's the mm-hmm. best way to put it. The humor that he has though, just the way that he is, that's, that's it. And he also raps. He actually raps very well. So that's like something too about him, but it's, it's just like the world doesn't actually know him. And so I think that being able to know like that I do being able to know that he's not just this innocent man as well really helped me like move on very quickly mm-hmm. and know that the person that he was like playing himself to be like whenever we were like in our moments was disgenuine and so it like, was or was day, not like, my it was disgenuine it was yeah Okay, we'll have more with Sierra in a minute, but first, it's time for a special part of today's show brought to you by Heineken Silver. New, crisp, and refreshing, Heineken Silver has only 3.2 carbs and 95 calories and a taste with no bitter endings. And we know bitter endings. In fact, let's talk about some bitter endings right now. And the ending that I want to talk about is Micah and Paul from Love is Blind, of course. So since Callie and I last chatted about Love is Blind, Quite a bit has come out. He made the cardinal mistake, in my opinion, of talking to TMZ cameras at the airport, which I don't know why one would do that, but who knows? Honestly, it changes my perspective of Paul a little bit. I can't lie. And meanwhile, she's done a bunch of interviews and went on the Vial Files with Nick. And here's what we've learned since the reunion, which I was going to say, it shouldn't even be called a reunion. It's more of like an after show because like... Who's being reunited? But anyway, here's what we've learned. So they tried to date afterwards, including Paul going to visit her in Arizona, which we saw him say on the show, he was willing to give it a shot. And then he claims that they they both confirmed this, that after he went to visit her in Arizona, he was back in Seattle and she broke up with him. And then shortly thereafter, she went to Europe with using his word, a random. That's a pretty bitter ending. I don't even know why you give it another shot. If you're just going to break up like that, but I don't really understand Micah. That said, I do feel like Micah has had a pretty good post show showing. She has not really like gone after anyone. I feel like she's just focused on herself. She's, as I say, they've, she's taken ownership. She claims responsibility, which is like the watchwords of the reunion. So I would say my impression of her is the same, which is like, I kind of feel neutral, but I, I do want to know more about who she was dating right after and what that's like. But the biggest 
question to me is who's Paul dating now? He revealed that he ended up dating someone else he met in the pods, but didn't get engaged to a woman named Wendy, who we didn't get to see too much. It was short lived. He said they were too similar. And when I read about that, I was just like, you know what, Paul, maybe just don't talk that much anymore. I think, I think I liked him better in the edit. And it made me realize that he got a pretty good edit and that's nice of the show, I suppose. But I just ultimately feel like Micah and Paul, we could see it. They were never going to be right for each other. And everything they have said and done since has just confirmed that. So it was a bitter ending, but ultimately the right ending for them. Just like with Jackie and Marshall, that was also a bitter ending, but the right ending. So I'm happy for everyone that they're, you know, on their path. Seems like everyone's going to be okay. I hope. Anyway, with Heineken Silver, you get all the taste with no bitter endings. Only 3.2 carbs and 95 calories. That's new, crisp, and refreshing Heineken Silver. Order now at Heineken.com slash silver. Must be 21 plus to purchase. Please enjoy Heineken responsibly. We'll be checking in on Love is Blind as more news comes out. Don't you worry. And I'm sure there will be some. I will say there also was an article in Insider last week about some of the really treacherous and unfair conditions that the cast are subjected to and Danielle and Nick from season two in particular were speaking out. So we'll continue to follow that and and keep up with all the contestant testimonials. But in the meantime, let's go back to Bachelor. I'm just really enjoying Sierra. I hope you are too. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at visible.com and use the code visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You know, I find it interesting that like part of the kind of like character that the show created. And again, I don't, I don't like, I don't mean this to be blaming him because I actually don't think that he has like a ton of control over this, but again, I don't know. But, and so I'm not trying to make this like a personal attack on him and I hope it doesn't sound that way, but I guess like, I'm just sort of interested in this dynamic about like trying to hide who he really is. Like, what's the point of that? Like, what's the point of making it seem like he doesn't have an affinity for black culture or like he doesn't, doesn't participate in a lot of the culture that's popular with black people. Like what is that? Like, what, like, what's the point of that? I don't, I just like actually don't even understand it. I think it's because it doesn't sell. Mm -hmm. I mean, truly, I think that, I mean, you like you, like, I mean, even the comments I would get in my inbox about how I would like, James doesn't need a black mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, things like that. I mean, it's America, unfortunately, you know, we're supposed to be this very like progressive like country and everything like that. But when it comes to race, I I feel like we're behind, you know, and it's really sad. It doesn't sell like him having black culture, him being this white man with a, a white son and was married to a white woman and then having this black culture and everything. And then like, it's just a lot harder to sell. And yeah. unfortunately, America is a capital capitalism. We all have capitalism here. At the end of the day, we want things to sell. And that's all we care about here. And it's really sad because other countries actually don't have that as much. And so, which is probably why they're a lot happier 
in other places too. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so to answer your question, I think that's why. <laughs> you know, like even the way that I think I talk about race as it relates to The Bachelor is is often like very binary. And, you know, one thing that I think you're also bringing up is like, the, the Bachelor has gotten a lot better with having people who identify as Black and people who identify as African-American on the show, but there aren't that many Asian men and women at all. And there are very, you know, there have been a lot, not a lot, but there have been a few people who have like Mexican heritage or other like Latin American heritage, but it's like really downplayed. And like, for example, both Claire and Gabby, I believe have Mexican mothers. And it was like very very little discussed. If they didn't really want to talk about it, like that's mm-hmm. also like totally their prerogative. Like I, I'm not like saying they have to, of course, but I do feel like there's such an emphasis on the show about race strictly versus like black and white. And, but there's obviously so, so much more to representation and diversity than just like a binary way of looking exactly. at it. So with all this in mind, like, would you ever go back on a bachelor show? Um, hopefully not. Um, you know, <laughs> I forgot your hopefully- boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm hoping not, but I mean, yeah, if me and my boyfriend broke up and, you know, my work let me, you know, I'm not going to leave open AI to go on that show. Hell no. <laughs> my company, the I have not worked at a better company in my life. Probably. I have an amazing team that is so like encouraging and they believe in me. I have an amazing like supervisor. I just... I really, really, really love like where I'm at. And I've actually never been at a company where I love where I'm at, where I feel accepted. I mean, so I would never leave that for, you know, a temporary, a very temporary fickle experience unless they were chill with it, which they probably would be chill with it, you know, but you know, still (laughs) the goal is hopefully if I come back, it's a a host. (laughs) Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to, I'm sorry I cut you off, but I, I asked more because like, you have such a good attitude, but like, it doesn't sound like you had a very positive experience on Paradise. I mean, we haven't even talked about Clayton, but like, it just sounds like (laughs) what you experienced. Like, I don't know why you'd want to go back. That's actually why I asked, not like the, like, and I, you know, I hope your relationship works out, but like, I was, when you were talking about everything about like how Michael has been portrayed and, and sort of how, you know, what the experience is like for you. I was just wondering if you have like animosity or resentment and it, it doesn't seem like you do, but I like, I'm kind of no. amazed because it doesn't sound positive. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't all that positive. No, but it wasn't also all that. I, I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of shitty things that just happen in life, mm-hmm. but there are a lot of good things that happen. Like, like, I don't know. It's kind of like, it's like cheer camp, mm-hmm. you know, did like, you go to cheer camp? I like I did gotcha. I back in high school and And it's like, you fucking hate waking up every day at 6 a.m. You're exhausted because you're like doing things all day. And in the moment, it's miserable. But then you look back or church camp or any of them, right? And you look back and you're like, wow, I made so many good friends. And look at like, we all suffered together, you know, like, and it's like, it's this feeling of knowing that like, you didn't go through it alone. Other people also went through that experience and knowing that you made friends from it. And knowing that you have an experience that's special that nobody else has but the people that were there. And I think, like, things like that are are really cool and they outweigh the shitty things. Because even though things are shitty, you have people in your corner. Like, I'm going through all my shit and I can hit up my girls and talk to them about it. I can express things. They can hit me up. And so when you have this group of people that have your back, it's a lot easier to go through, like, shitty moments, you know? Yeah. And it's almost like, it's almost like a toxic relationship. <laughs> where you like crave it, you know, there's a part of you that's like, I'm ready to go back into the battlefield. I'm yeah. ready. You know, like you've got that feeling. And so, you know, I, I'm not opposed to like ever doing something ever again, but I just now know like, fuck it. Like if I do do something again, d- I like don't, don't, when you're watching me, if you did like, you know what I'm saying? Don't take everything seriously. Cause I'm probably playing the game at this point. You know, I'm probably yeah. looking for love. I'm just saying, like, I'm calling myself out. If I go back on a show, I'm not looking for love. I'm playing the game. And, Good for and you. I'm there for y'all's entertainment. Like I am there <laughs> for your entertainment. I will stir some shit up. I will be a producer puppet. I will tell, I will do whatever the fuck they want me to do. And we will have a fun ass time. I'll be the villain. I don't care I, at this point because I think we need to get you on Bravo. I feel like you'd be very useful on a, on a Bravo show. 
Well, I want to, I want to go into hosting. That's my goal. I just did that this past weekend. Um, and Ooh, I, nice. I loved it. And so I want to hopefully like if I'm back on a show, it's like hosting. Cool. All right, Sierra, tell us about your makeup and skincare routine. First of all, I can see you right now and I think you're wearing makeup. It looks so good and yes. like neutral. I l- absolutely love it. But like, what are your go-to products? Ooh, so, okay. There's a lot. My daily routine is I wash my face with a glycolic acid cleanser. It's in my shower. I just didn't want to go back up there. But after I wash my face, I do cotton rounds. Not cotton balls, cotton rounds. And okay. I use kombucha, 10% AHA power exfoliant. Okay. Morning and night. Okay. And after washing my face, and then in the daytime, I use this Youth by the People Vitamin C and Caffeine Energy Serum. Ooh. This is my daytime one. Ooh, okay. And after my toner at nighttime, I use Inky List, $8. Nice. $8. You know, Tran examic acid serum, whatever the, that means. Nice. I'm really into, I have no idea. I'm like, I need to get, obviously what I'm learning from you through these products so far is I need to get into the serum game because I'm not, but also I really like uh, drugstore mascara. Like I just like cover girl mascara. I'm not wearing any makeup right that's now. That's okay. But when I do, that's, that's what okay. I like. okay. Mascara doesn't matter. Yeah. That, if you, and also if you, fun fact to, for those that don't know, but if you use Maybelline, I believe it is. I believe it's Maybelline. Maybelline is made by the same like umbrella company as like Dior, Giorgio oh. Armani, oh. all of that stuff. Good to yeah. know. Okay, so, so it's the same. <laughs> exactly, it's basically the same. It's cheaper because of packaging and all these other things, right? And there are probably some different ingredients, but the point is that Maybelline, CoverGirl, nothing bad. With, not, like like you can you can use those ones. There's nothing bad. Yeah, those I, CoverGirl's my my fave. This moisturizer, Belief Aqua Balm. Okay. There's an aqua cream and there's an aqua balm. Aqua balm. Okay. Is that. And then Clear as Day SPF. I use this every day. I it's use clear. a lot. Yeah. It, it's amazing. Nice. All and right. then I use, last but not least, I got a packaging of this, right? <laughs> Restocked. And it is. No, it's the Alicia Keys skincare. Oh, it's at Ulta, and yeah, and I literally love it. It's a fucking amazing. Oh, am I allowed to cuss? Sorry. Yes, you are. Uh, Carry on. But it's it's amazing. Okay, and so I got sent the entire like line of it, and been using it, and then gotten some more, and like it's amazing too and i'm gonna take it to coachella with me um and use it all there but it's obviously by leash key so it's black woman owned so that's really cool nice but it's good her her freaking spf is bomb okay there it doesn't give you no ashy look it's like it's perfect it's amazing so my sister was like give it to me i said no it's mine <laughs> <laughs> so it just things like that where i absolutely love it and so that's really cool. And it's like not expensive either. Cause I'm about nice. like, skincare doesn't have to be expensive. I know. But my number one rule that I will tell you or anybody else out there is spend money on your skincare, not on your makeup. Okay. Mm. Because as you have good skincare, you don't need good makeup. It's and true. That That's goes, a great point. Yeah. Into exactly. And my makeup I'm wearing is rare beauty. Oh, nice. So, it looks really good. Yeah. It does. It looks really good. Sierra, Thank it was so you. nice to chat with you. Thank you so much. And I I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Hope you have a great time at Coachella and good luck moving to the Bay Area. Just, I, I hope you like burritos. San Francisco has some really good burritos. I guess you must if you live in Texas. You must like really? some. Really? Te- yeah. They have burritos in San Francisco? Really? It's super I, weird. I wasn't really feeling the food there. LA is a taco place and San Francisco is a burrito place. It's really weird, but they have, there's the Bay area has really, really good food. Where would you suggest living in the, if you had to pick three areas that you would say that like knowing me, mm-hmm. kind of how I am, those three areas that you would suggest me living in the Bay area as a whole. Sure. I think I would live in Oakland, but that's a lot because the weather in San Francisco is shitty and it is just better in the East Bay. So okay, I think Oakland would be my top choice. Also, okay. like I lived, I was really young when I lived there. I was 22 to 25. And I like, I would, I don't, I don't think that would have been the right 
place for me at those ages. But like, if I were to move to the East Bay, if I was supposed to move to the Bay now, I'd definitely choose the East Bay. And I think Oakland has like a really good food scene. You can, there's a public transportation, but you can also drive. If you like to be outdoors, a lot of like access to parks, et cetera. So I would choose Oakland. And then I like the sort of like where you're talking about, like the Fillmore area in San Francisco. Like that's really nice. It's really pretty. And then I loved living in the Western edition, but like I love parks. Like I really like being near green spaces. So I would, I would like gear myself towards that. Western edition. So I don't know where that's at. So I'm going to have to look that one up. I think it's also called Nopa. What's well, like a new name. Nope. North of the Panhandle. Okay. It's that, that area. <gasps> oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. I think I did go to a pizza place over there. So I think oh, I know what you're um, talking about. There's a little star pizza. pizza? I think so. Yeah, it's under Visadero. It's like they have the corn milk crust. I think. Yes. They have gluten free crust. Yeah. 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 It's really good. Yes. I, yep. li- I used to live down the street it. from there. It's very good. Okay. That area is really cute. And there's like a Bob's coffee or yeah. something like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. So that's, yep. That's exactly like that area is I went there with my boyfriend. We had a pizza date there. Actually. Yeah. It's really cute. And we were like, this is a cute area, but it looks expensive. there. It wasn't when I lived there, honestly, it, it was crazy, but also Hayes Valley, I think would be nice too. Hayes Valley is like a little bougie and also a little sunnier. I just like, I hated the lack of sun in San Francisco and I'm not even like a sun person, but it just is relentless. I love summer and San Francisco summer sucks. That's why I would live in Oakland. I'm the same way. I like sunshine. So okay, you that, need to live in the East Bay, Sierra. That, you got to live in the East okay. Bay. <laughs> I'm going to do Oakland then. I'll do Oakland. I keep, I mean, I feel like, yeah, I'll do Oakland. I, I just seemed small when I went there, but maybe I just didn't see enough of it. So, it's definitely a little bit yeah. more suburban, but there's like a lot around. Berkeley's awesome. I don't know. I, I think I think for quality of life, I choose the East Bay. All right, then it is. I'll be looking in the East Bay then. <laughs> oh my God. I can't, I didn't know we, I've been having such an impactful conversation in both ways. Like, you know, hear, hearing from you about your experience in Korea and me helping you with where to live. This is great. <laughs> yeah, it's actually been really helpful. Very good. Well, it was, it was seriously so nice to meet you. Wish you the best of luck. Hope you come back on the pod again. And I hope that you find the hosting opportunities too, because I think you'd be great at it. Thank you. Thank you so much, girl. It was a wonderful meeting you, Julia. Likewise. You are absolutely amazing. And you have such a good podcast. Thanks. Voice. Like, oh, thank you. It's good to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do a lot of them, so I could send you some links. Sierra did not disappoint. We will transcribe somewhere, perhaps on the Ringer Reality TV Instagram, all the products she mentioned so that you can check them out. I really appreciated it. She was so enthusiastic about it too. Thank you as always to my producer, Jane Whaley. Next, we have Jared and Ashley on Thursday. Can't wait for you all to hear that interview. They're always delightful and hope you have a great week.